In your last class, I was discussing the desirable factors uh, in case of uh, the site selection of dam or reservoir. Uh, we are basically discussing about the dam. Okay. And there I have mentioned that if the bedrock is at a shallow depth, then your uh, production cost or your construction cost will be very less. Now, the question comes in that how will you estimate the bedrock, how will you determine the bedrock depth from the surface without digging it? Okay, not it's a huge area, suppose. And you are not allowed to sometimes you are not uh, allowed to do any invasive work before uh, taking or uh, before purchasing the land or uh, before purchasing or uh, before uh, starting the project what you will do then in your preliminary stage will be involving some geophysical method you will be involving some geophysical method you will be employing some geophysical method to understand the bedrock depth that means we will be estimating the overburden. So what is overburden? Suppose, uh, let's consider uh, this is the bedrock at certain depth and above of which you have loose uncompacted sediments. So this is our bedrock. So this is our bedrock and above of which you have uncompacted soil and this soil is called overburden. Okay, so you have to estimate the overburden by using geophysical means. So what are the geophysical methods uh, generally employed? There are two geophysical methods people use. One is the elastic resistivity studies, another one is the seismic reflection studies. You can also use, you may also use GPR, which is, uh, which stands for round penetrating radar. Okay, so GPR uh, is a shallow subsurface high resolution imaging tool and it can see it basically employed uh, employ electromagnetic wave just like the mobile communication just like the radio wave it also uses the radio wave the frequency ranges between 10 megahertz to few uh, gigahertz like 2.4 gigahertz okay so by employing gpr we can also estimate the open button depth so uh, let me brief, uh, let me give you a brief idea about the electrical resistivity method and uh, the uh, seismic reflection studies so as the name suggests in case of electrical resistivity method okay in this case originally uh, let's draw a schematic diagram or a simple diagram we generally take two current electrode you are sending current i okay in this electrode and measuring the amplitude by this ampere meter or um, the uh, sophisticated instrument so there will be two steel electrode generally we use the steel electrode like this okay so and uh, we also use we also use some potential uh, electrode some steel electrode to measure the potential between two points okay so this will be your observation point this middle point will be the observation point and if you measure the potential at this location at this point then you will get the value at means is giving the value at this observation point so by seeing the data here so uh, uh, later on after taking uh, the data at this location you will be moving the entire system in this direction suppose you are moving in this direction along a line you will be moving it so this is how generally the resistivity uh, uh, system work or resistivity method work and resistivity method you will be measuring the resistivity with respect to the a B by 2. What is A B? This is A, this is B. The uh, difference or the distance between the current electrode by 2. So, what happened actually? It is not a but what happened When I am keeping the potential electrode, this is our potential electrode P1 and P2. Okay. Uh, and O is the observation point. At the observation point, you will have a 1D profile from this uh, structure, and there you can easily identify that identify several layer boundaries so you can easily identify the uh, soil you can easily identify the bedrock because bedrock has a higher resistivity than the soil okay uh, if saline water or any uh, kind of water present in that area that can be identified with resistivity also so resistivity is also a uh, good tool or important tool for water table mapping but in this case, in this scenario, you'll be doing, uh, you'll be uh, now people are using instead of 
if you have one set of current electrode and one set of potential electrode, then you use several uh, current and potential electrode. Uh, actually, what do you do? There is a lot of potential and current electrode around 32 or 64 or 128. And this system is very mega. Okay? They put all the electrodes. Okay, on the ground like this, and they are doing the ERT to get a 2D image. Okay, so for the initial case, this will be the current electrode C1 and C2, and uh, this will be the pure potential electrode P1 and P2. Later case, this will be the current electrode C1, this will be the P1, this will be the P2, and this will be the C2. This one, okay, like this way, they generally do the survey. It's called the electrical resistivity tomography, or in short, ERT. A for your information. Uh, मतलब थोड़ा बहुत जान लो इसके बारे में कि कैसे काम करते हैं उसके बाद यू कैन इमेज द सब सरफेस इन टू डी एंड फ्रॉम देयर यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाट इज द ओवर बटन थिकनेस दैट वाज आवर होल ऑब्जेक्टिव इन केस ऑफ सेस्मिक रिफ्लेक्शन स्टडी लाइक दिस यू विल बी यूजिंग द साउंड वेव इन दिस केस यू आर यूजिंग द इलेक्ट्रिकल मेथड और इलेक्ट्रिकल करंट इन दिस केस यू विल बी यूजिंग द एक्विस्टिक वेव और साउंड वेव ओके so you'll be hammering here and you'll be putting several geophones so what are geophones geophones are the receivers which basically receive the reflected acoustic wave so kya hota hai uh, if you are hammering here then uh, there are several receiver you place on the ground and uh, generally the reflection study is done for the cells of surface imaging reflection study of seismic is done for what is seismic what is seismic we will discuss uh, in your next class or uh, not next class in next chapter where I'll, when i'll be discussing the seismology there i'll discuss in details what is poe what is eso lekin abhi ke liye samajh lo ki kya hota hai na ka jo light ka refraction jaisa hota hai same principle uh, this acoustic wave follows uh, or similar for principle they follow and they propagate like this and as it unko reflection ka play, uh, signal mil jayega and from this reflection signal Okay, you can identify several layers. So our objective is to identify the over button, and we can do it by using electrical method ERT by using seismic refraction study. Okay, or by using GPR. Now, yes. Yes, that was the first point I discussed. So wow, wow. what do you mean by over button? Over button means that the bedrock of the soil is we call loose term mein over button. Bolte hai usko. Jo desirable depth hai, usko upar jitna kuch hai na, usko, jo desirable layer hai, okay? In this case, it's a bedrock. Uske upar jitna kuch rahega, that is your over button. It's a common term to explain uh, the soil above bedrock or any desirable layer. Okay. Now, third point is most important point. It's coming from your petrological knowledge. Uh, is required for this. What are the competent rocks for the safe foundation? And this is very much important. What are the competent rocks from safe foundation? So, uh, uh, tell me which rocks would be competent enough, igneous, metamorphic, or sedimentary for the dam construction, and why? Tell me, class. Tell me. अरे बोलो कौन सा रॉक होना चाहिए कि उसके फाउंडेशन के लिए आप इन जनरल अगर मैं तीन रॉक की बात करूँ इग्नियस मेटाफोरिकल सेटिमेट्री कौन सा रॉक होना चाहिए Tell me. क्या होना चाहिए क्या चाहिए एक्चुअली जो डैम का सेफ फाउंडेशन के लिए क्या चाहिए मुझे पेड रॉक में और कौन सी टाइप का रॉक मुझे चाहिए अंडरग्राउंड में जिसके ऊपर मैं कंस्ट्रक्शन बना सकता हूँ विच टाइप ऑफ रॉक आई रियली रिक्वर्ड ऑन हुईज आई वी बिल्डिंग समथिंग टेल मी हार्ड रॉक यही तो पूछ रहा था कि हार्ड रॉक तो हार्ड रॉक कौन सा रॉक हार्ड रॉक होता है इग्नियस होता है मेटामोफिक भी हार्ड रॉक होता है सेडिमेंट्री उतना कॉम्पिटेंट नहीं होता सो इग्नियस रॉक अगर रहा या मेटामोफिक रहा वेल कॉम्पिटेड और आई एम कॉन्सिडरिंग इट्स नॉट फ्रेक्सर मच then i'll be saying these two rocks are good enough okay so 
if the igneous rocks occur at the selected dam sites, they will offer a safe basis. If you found a igneous rock, and sedimentary rocks, you should avoid it. Metamorphic rocks are good enough to provide a safe foundation. Now let's discuss which type of igneous rock is good enough, which are not. Which type of uh, sedimentary rocks can be used as your uh, safe foundation? So to understand that, you have to keep few points in mind. So the suitability of a site uh, to serve as a foundation uh, for measure them basically depends on the factors like which type of rocks are there. Is a, first you will be looking the rock type. Is it igneous, metamorphic or sedimentary? If it's igneous, then okay. Then you will be checked it on your uh, notebook that okay, it's a igneous rock. Second point you have to consider that it's very important that is the extent of weathering. Suppose your rock you saw there is igneous rock, but it goes under a severe weathering condition. So what will happen? The rock will be weaker by the weathering. It could be the igneous rock, but due to the weathering, it will be weaker. Sec third point will be the intrusion. Okay, intrusion means the magmatic intrusion or any other kind of intrusion. Fourth point you have should consider that the fracturing. It could be igneous rock, it could be metamorphic rock, but if say huge fracture rock, suppose you have two options. One is uh, igneous rock, which with fractures, huge uh, or several or numerous fractures present in the igneous rock, several major fractures present in the igneous rock, and another one is the sedimentary rock, okay, or compacted sedimentary rock. Then I will suggest you go for the sedimentary rock because in this condition, sedimentary rock is better than the igneous rock. Agar fracture ho jata hai, to koi matlab hi banta hai iska. Kuch bhi loko. And the extent of the geological structure, what type of structures present here, that will be an important one. So that we will be discussed in details. So first let's discuss about the what type of igneous rock you should consider for uh, your dam site. First one, the among the rock types are open some massive plutonic and the hyperbasal igneous rock. I hope you remember what is a plutonic igneous rock, what is a hyperbasal igneous rock. And among the rock types, the occurrence of massive plutonic or the hyperbasal rocks is the most desirable at the dam site because they are very strong and durable due to their dense character. So uh, tell me what do you mean by plutonic igneous rock? Tell me. Yes, yes, yes. And hyperbasal medium depth may be within 2 km, that's the hyperbasal igneous rock. So among the rock types, the massive plutonic are a good compacted and hard rock. Uh, generally uh, doesn't like um, generally doesn't like granite it's a good hard rock that's why we generally use for flooring and kitchen topping and for those kind of uh, work okay so if you are finding you found this plutonium and hyperbasal igneous rock then you can go for the dam construction so igneous rock is very much suitable because it has interlocking textures it has hard silicate mineral composition it has uh, negligible porosity and permeability. Sedimentary rock has high porosity and permeability. That's why we generally avoid sedimentary rock. But in this case, it has negligible porosity and permeability. Consider a, a rock structure or rock body or a rock piece. And in that rock body, there, there are several holes in it. So obviously, it will be a weaker uh, choice. Okay. So when negligible, this is an important point that uh, the porosity and permeability in, uh, present in the igneous rock is very neg negligible. That's why it can't be a reservoir of any kind. Until unless any secondary fracture uh, vags or secondary porosity like fracture vags are developed. And there is obviously there is no weak lens. Uh, in sedimentary layers, uh, sedimentary rock you will find layers after layers like this. So there are a chance between um, the slipping of one layer uh, on another. So there are no weak planes in between the layers in the igneous rock. That's why I consider igneous rock to be a good one for dam construction. So the, what are the plutonic rocks like granites, cyanides, diorite and gabbros are very competent and desirable rocks. 
so if you found uh, igneous rock in that uh, in your dam site then you will go for the construction provided it's not fractured severely or it's not weathered severely in case of sedimentary rock sedimentary rock has a uh, bedding bedding planes you can see here and in between the bedding planes you there might be the cementation so the bedding plane is orientation thickness of the bed nature plane size leaching soluble mineral is basically influence the strength and durability of different sedimentary rock okay so let's discuss one by one first one is shale shale are inherently incompetent why shales are they are basically clay rock or clay rock okay so clay ka to malum hai wo slippery sense deta hai because it's giving you the slippery basis that's why you shouldn't be considering shales uh, in your site they are most undesirable at uh, dam construction so shale could be of two types one is i'm talking about shale write this down so one could be the cementation one means uh, between two shale layers you have the cemented material another one is the compacted one so for the cemented uh, the cementation cells are stronger and they generally do not disintegrate when it's subject to weathering and drying so the uh, what happened in case of cementation uh, at time pe to tum cementation cell ke upar bharosa kar bhi loge but in case of compacted cell you wouldn't be uh, believing the compacted cell strength okay it may appear as a hard rock type and all but as it, there is no cementing material in between them it will also it will give you the slippery base so your dam might be collapsed or dam might be uh yes your dam might be collapsed or the, it will be creeping um over the years or it will not be capable enough to hold up that entire rock um, structure okay so at some point if you have no uh, um, other kind of rock present there so you have to take some remedial measures and you can consider cementation uh, clay but all suggest or the engineering geologists suggest they will suggest so to avoid that area if the shell is present you should avoid it now about sandstone well cemented siliceous type competent and suitable for the dam construction sandstone kahan pe mila tha hum logo ka bindhan sandstone red fort mein building stone ke liye hum log use karte hain usually use sandstone as a building stone like the red fort uh, like several forts in rajasthan limestone kahan pe use karte hain pyramid pe remember uh, uh, yaad hai na so uh, sandstone and limestone you can consider they are almost competent enough and sandstone agar rehta hai to it will be uh, suitable for the dam construction then again you have to consider the porosity and you have to consider the permeability in between them so you have to porosity and permeability consider karke strength consider karke you will go for sandstone and all laterites are the weathered rock type weathered sedimentary rock and laterites and conglomerates are undesirable at dam sites they don't have any they are basically the weaker rocks limestone are very much competent because we make uh, several structure using limestones and they are competent if they are in massive in structure but one problem with limestone is that limestone doesn't work in the dam site why when i'm talking about dam okay and there are should be a reservoir associated with it if this structure or the bedrock or uh, this rock underground rock is limestone what will happen what i will react with the limestone and it will make bogs and holes uh, through the limestone and the leakage will be uh, maximum uh, eventually a catastrophic failure will happen so limestones are competent okay strength wise but uh due to the chemical reaction with the water or due to its reactive property because it's a calcium carbonate um, it becomes a undesirable rock in the dam site so you shouldn't be considering limestone you shouldn't be considering laterites you shouldn't be considering conglomerates or uh, you can go with the sandstone shells all suggest you not to consider so if you found sandstone it's okay If you don't found sandstone, I think you should uh, not select that site, or you have to take some remedial measures. And let me tell you, when you are taking some remedial measures, it will cost you over your budget. 
ओके सोल्यूशन फैन बना मीन टू विल रिएक्ट व्हाट विल हैपन मीन्स लाइन स्टोन आर कॉम्पिटेंट ए कंडीशन दिया हुआ है आकर इट्स नॉट रिएक्टिव विथ द वाटर सोल्यूशन फैन बना मीन्स लाइन स्टोन क्या होता है ना पानी में घुल जाता है कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट कैल्शियम बाइक कार्बोनेट बनाता है सो कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट प्रोड्यूस कैल्शियम बाइक कार्बोनेट वाई नीट रिएक्ट विथ वाटर सो दैट्स कॉल द सोल्यूशन फैन बना ओके सो लाइन स्टोन आर कॉन्फिडेंट दे ये थोड़ा सा मतलब फ्रीकी लिखा हुआ है ये इस पॉइंट को कि तभी कॉन्फिडेंट होगा जब इसका आ, कोई सॉल्यूशन फेनोमेन नहीं होगा ए, एक टाइप पे कर रहे हो एक साइड पे कर रहे हो डैम का लाइमस्टोन का कंसीडर करके जहाँ पे वो पानी का वेयर द वाटर विल नॉट बी रीचिंग दैट साइड इज फाइन बट जनरली यू शुड नॉट कंसीडर लाइम फॉर योर डैम कॉन्स्टेंस नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज इज द सुटेबिलिटी ऑफ द मेटामोफिक रॉक मेटामोफिक रॉक्स आर गुड दे आर वेरी गुड बट नॉट ऑल द टाइप ऑफ मेटामोफिक रॉक्स आर कॉन्सिडर्ड टू बी टू बी ए सुटेबल रॉक फॉर डैम कंस्ट्रक्शन हुई वन इज गुड वन दैट इज द नीस स्ट्रक्चर आई होप यू रिमेम्बर वॉट इज द नीस स्ट्रक्चर एंड नीस इज आर जनरली कॉम्पिटेंट लाइक डैन इज अनलेस they produce a high degree of foliation and are richly accompanied by mica like minerals so nisses are good nisses are good uh, compacted um, metamorphic rock but two things you have to consider that it shouldn't be containing high degree of foliation foliation you know the foliation just like layer after layer or uh, within that rock structure just like the onion you were removing one layer after one layer okay it's made up of uh, several layers so that's called the foliation structure so when it contains very high degree of foliation and richly accompanied mica like minerals so mica is a foliated uh, mineral it has a foliation structure it has a foliated mineral structure so you will be avoiding high degree of foliation you will be avoiding the mica like minerals so otherwise nice is good it's a competent like the granite in case of quartzite quartzite as you know it's a very hard and highly resistant to weathering so you might have seen quartzite in your neighborhood if you uh, if you live in um, village then uh, you might have seen quartzite most of the cases you will find quartzite uh, at least mere side mein to quartzite hai maximum are very hard and is highly resistant to weathering you cannot break it easily so they are neither porous and nor permeable so they are not good for uh, tunneling why that i will discuss uh, in the tunneling part but they are good for dam construction now let's uh, discuss about the marble marble is good we generally use marble for flooring uh, we generally use marble for uh, several places in public places um, uh, and some construction some beautification in the construction we generally use marbles you know that they are not porous they are permeable not permeable so one point is there there's not porous not permeable but the virtue of the chemical composition the minerals they are unsuitable at dam site means the main constituents of marbles are again calcium carbonate so it has a reactive property with the water so when you say reactive property with the water and dam means there should be a reservoir there will be a reservoir or there must be a reservoir associated with the dam then you shouldn't be you shouldn't be go for this marble uh, as a suitable uh, suitable rock type at the dam site marble se kya bana hua hai koi monument kiya hai india mein taj mahal or you have heard that acid rain sometimes uh, the acid rain is making ye iska jo taj mahal ka jo structure hai wo matlab isko corrode kar raha hai dheere dheere hai na acid rain ke wajah se wo dheere dheere wo eroded ho raha hai wo bhi um, uh, news pe kabhi kabhi aata hai so hota hai okay now what about slates slate is no yes 
what is the granular structure you tell me tell me what is the granular structure metamorphic rock me what do you mean by granular structure niche structure sheet structure granular structure kya hota hai kya hota hai jaake padhna ye to maine pucha hi nahi kisi se granular structure kya hota hai anyone metamorphic स्ट्रक्चर सब कुछ मिक्स कर दिया क्या होता है स्ट्रक्चर यू विल रीड दिस ओके मिर्सेम का जो चैप्टर था मेटामोफिक उसको एक बार पढ़ लेना कि ग्रेनुलर स्ट्रक्चर क्या होता है सिस क्या होता है नीस स्ट्रक्चर क्या होता है ऑर्गेन नीस क्या होता है ये सब पढ़ लेना ठीक है ना So slates are generally not good for the reservoir, uh, the dam and reservoir, and slates basically bear a typical slaty cavity. It's not good for reservoir also because uh, slates are uh, slates has a foliated structure. Okay, like this. The other two layer you will be seeing, and there is a chance the water will be leaking uh, profusely through this. Um, uh passes through this weak uh, or through this bedding planes okay so slates basically bears a typical slaty cavity hence the rock is soft and it's weak and undesirable at the dam site of course it is necessary that such rocks should not have been affected by any intense weathering or fracture or dike or any geological structure like shearing faulting and jointing so slates as it has slaty cleavage means the foliation structure or foliated structure it is not good enough for your dam construction or it couldn't be used as a it could not be used as a foundation rock in your dam construction okay so what did we learn that igneous and metamorphic rocks are good enough when it is fresh and fresh means it is free from the structural defects means there is no uh, much severe fracturing there is not much of holding uh, is there so by considering this factor you can identify uh, the suitable site but not only considering another key point i have discussed there that you have to consider the structural geological part of the site also because igneous rock ho sakta hai lekin isko agar zyada fracture raha then it is ye koi kaam ka nahi rahega if it's an igneous rock and you are seeing several fracture in it then it will not be used as your foundation rock or you cannot build a structure over that rock kitna bhi igneous ho ho jaye ya metamorphic ho jaye so you have to consider the structural features also let's discuss that so the suitability of the dam the occurrence of favorable geological structure what happened yes geological structure is very important requirement and on the structural geology you have to learn this rock bear certain inherent or original physical properties such as character gets modified let me discuss with some example First case I'm considering the cases of undisturbed or horizontal strata. How would you visualize this thing? Uh, A four size का जो pages होता है ना, okay? So these beds I'm talking about this bed and their structure. Suppose there are horizontal strata and तुम कैसे visualize करोगे? Consider you have taken a bunch of whole bunch of A four sheets, okay? A thick uh, A four sheet bunch. और एक एक पन्ने को एक एक लेयर मान लो ठीक है नाउ यू हैव टेकन दैट ए फोर सीट्स नाउ इफ यू केव्ड ए वेट हियर लाइक दिस वे देन व्हाट विल हैपन इट विल बी इन द इट विल बी इन द मोस्ट स्टेबल कंडीशन बिकॉज द वेट ऑफ दैट वेट ऑफ दैट मेटर और वेट ऑफ दैट थिंग is acting downward direction the resultant force is also acting in the downward direction center of gravity aa jayega wo sab aa jayega wo to malum hi hai to iske liye ye bahut hi stable condition mein rehta hai 
like here so this is your dam structure okay weight of the dam is acting in this direction resultant force is acting in this direction and uh, this is the reservoir so the dam construction on a horizontal strata bed uh, as it acting perpendicular to the bed it will be in the most stable condition then let's talk about the reservoir water this is also a factor okay so the reservoir also water will also percolate aise to hum logo ka jo objective hota hai in general we generally a uh, desire for that there should not be any leakage but kuch bhi kar lo there will be some leakage there will be some uh, seepaging of water through this bedding or through this bedding plan uh, bedding plain okay so uh, the seepage of reservoir water that may take place beneath the dam is prevented by the weight of the dam which are vertically downward so here if you pass want to pass something through this layer through this your a4 sheet or anything what will happen kya hoga nahi yahan pe agar tum weight ek bada sa weight uh, de diye ho and weight ke telte iske andar utna gap hi nahi rahega ye layers bahut hi compacted ho jayega so there wouldn't be much space there wouldn't be much uh, uh, area through which anything any fluid can pass aisa ho, hoga na so if you put a uh, weight of the dam here so it will be you can say it could be compacted or it will effectively prevent the seepaging so ye bahut hi acha condition hai aur easily seepage hoga hoga bhi nahi agar ye horizontal hoga aur isme tum kuch cemented material aur kuch leak proof material de di ho suppose then wo to hoga bhi nahi ठीक है ना और बहुत पूरे एरिया में ये लीकेज यहाँ पे हॉराजेंटल केस में देना नहीं है जहाँ पे वो ओपनिंग है वहाँ पे दे दो और छोड़ दो बिकॉज इससे हॉराजेंटल लेयर देर वुड एन बी एनी चांस ऑफ एनी ओपनिंग सो दस द पॉसिबल अपलिफ्ट प्रेशर हुई इज द डेंजरस टू द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द डैम विच इफेक्टिवली रिड्यूस एंड लेट मी टेल यू ए सीपेज वाटर का क्या फंक्शन होता है वाई आई एम टेलिंग दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द वाटर पार्कुलेट थ्रू दिस बेडिंग प्लेन and it will give you a upward force dekha na water kya hoga iska usko halka kar dega bayon se ka bahut kuch dega uske chal chalte due to this uplift pressure kya hota hai na stability of the dam reduces in your later example you will see that how the stability of dam reduces with respect to this uh, seepages okay so basically the weight of the dam will be reduced and stability might be um स्टेबिलिटी घट जाएगा बट इन दिस केस एज द सीपेजिंग हैपनिंग हेयर डी टू दिस कॉम्प्रेशन और डी टू दिस पार्पेनिकुलर फोर्सेस द सीपेजिंग विल बी लेस दैट्स वाई द अपलिट प्रेशर विच इज वेरी डेंजरस टू द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द डैम विल इवेंचुअली रिड्यूस्ड दैट्स द केस नाउ व्हाट विल हैपन इन द टिल्टेड बेड सो सपोज दिस इज द टिल्टेड बेड दिस आर आवर बेड they are inclined with the surface there is uh, some angle okay so these bed are tilted and they are tilted in the opposite direction of the dam okay and the bed inclination let's say in between 10 degree to 30 degree this situation is uh, ideal why ideal because the resultant force act more or less perpendicular to the bedding plane which are dipping in the upstream side if you see the reservoir water thrust is acting this direction so this is our t weight is acting perpendicularly downward that is our weight and so the resultant force will be in this direction so resultant force you can see is the opposite direction this is side direction is the resultant force here this direction is the resultant force so this resultant force is opposite i'm just plotting the direction here opposite to the bedding the plane direction so what will happen this situation is very ideal because the resultant force are acting more or less perpendicular to the bedding plane and uh, which are in the dipping in the upstream side and the resultant force direction is opposite to the bedding plane direction so in general case it will not slip or the entire construction will not slip now if i take the other example where the tilted bed has um steep with the upstream dip okay 
so if the inclination is greater than 30 degree or near to the 80 degree uh, 90 degree so what will happen so what will happen that uh, thrust is acting this direction the weight is acting this direction the resultant force will be acting in this direction this situation is also good it's not a bad condition and for obvious reason in this case there should be no fleet of the dam site and no leakage of the water from the reservoir so what happening here uh, let me tell you in this case also the water will be leaking okay yeah force was very dangerous that is seepage so what will be leaking through this bedding plane or uh, along this bedding plane or following this bedding plane so it will be leaking in this direction so dam ke niche aa nahi raha hai it's not coming or not giving any force uh, buoyancy force under the dam okay so either wo leak ho raha hai to koi dikkat nahi stability se rahega in this case same thing happened here there is no water coming in this direction so it's coming in this direction so there is no upward lifting of force so stability of the dam would be good in this case also now beds with a steep downstream dip what will happen for obvious reason this is a dangerous situation why because if you see the weight of the dam and the resultant force okay this is the thrust the resultant force is acting parallel to the inclination bed or almost parallel to parallel to the inclination of the bed kya hoga wo a force size ke page maan lo okay aur tum usko pakde hue ho and uh, on that a force size page on the top of that you are putting something wo page ke sath kuch slip karke na uttar jayega so the, there is a chance that the entire dam construction will slip or uh, along with this layer and it will go down Uh, one example of that bhakra dam bhakra nangal dam okay it's a bhakra nangal dam in satlej uh, i think in punjab lies on such undesirable site it composed of sandstone and shale but people have taken several suitable measures to ensure safety i told you to write some of you are doing this bhakra nangal dam project right there you are writing this assignment some of you there you have seen that uh, this type of dam such generally situated on the untreachable site composed of sandstone and sand like this now what will happen in the fold condition so fold condition ke liye hum log pehle hi discuss kar chuke hain agar tumhara uh, dam fold ki is flank mein rahega to ye stable hoga ki unstable hoga tell me ye unstable hoga not suitable एंड um, ये सूटेबल कंडीशन में रहेगा ओके okay? ये भी सूटेबल रहेगा जस्ट लाइक दिस ओके एंड इन दिस केस दिस इज द मोस्ट गुड कंडीशन दैट यू आर पुटिंग डैम ऑन द ग्रेस्ट ऑफ ए फोल्ड दिस साइड में भी वो uh, सही रहता है लगभग कंसीडर द अपस्ट्रीम डीपिंग ऑफ द बेल्ट Now let's discuss about the faulting condition. So occurrence of faulting is respective of its altitude. Right at the dam site is most undesirable, and faulting might happen due to some earthquake and all. The location of the dam sites on a fault zone is basically undesirable for different reason. Okay, so you will be avoiding if it is severely fractured, or you have to take some remedial measures. You have to do some grouting. You have to do some other um, processes. Uh, you uh, other remedial measures you have to take. Okay. Same goes with the joints also. So among the different geology, joints are the most common and found in all kind of rocks everywhere. So joints will be there. You have to take the remedial measures. So in this jointing condition, grafting is very is generally capable of overcoming this effect of joints and it fill the gap between the joints. If the joints are not uh, or the gap of the joint is not filled up with uh, cemented material. so you have to put extra grouting there kharcha jada aayega lekin ye stable ho jayega so what will happen when the bed lie parallel to the length of the valley so this is our drone shot i'm taking okay upar se main le raha hu ek picture or uh, this is the cross section so here the beds are uh, parallel to the dam so this case this is the case where the dam is aligned across the strike and 
here the danger is almost always be present so you should be avoiding this structure so if there is uh, pairs which are parallel to the uh, reverse channel then you will be avoiding this structure see here 